I am Monty Alexander and I'm standing in front of the New York Blue Note, greatest jazz club. chance to make a living doing something I love, you know, so I've been doing it really literally for 50 years. Well, it was just a beautiful place to grow up. It was lovely. Everybody said good morning, hi to everybody every day. It's just a, a land of, um, all I knew was just a land of, of love, really. We just had respect for each other and and you know, before Bob wrote One Love, we were experiencing One Love. Music was a big part of our lives, and this is before the advent of reggae and ska. Growing up, I heard our Calypso music, and I was just a lucky kid because I loved music. From I was three, four years old, I was playing the piano. Then I fell in love with jazz, because local guys could play very, very well, and I, I wanted to be a part of that. So from I was 12 years old, I'd sneak out of school and go be with those musicians older than me, 10, 20 years older, and they, they dug me, they welcomed me, and I felt confident, and I would be on the recording sessions in the very same studios that 10 years later, Bob Marley came. Here comes a man who had such a, a powerful conviction about, about things that are really crucial to mankind, humankind. It was the, the delight in the melodies, it was the wickedness of the groove, this incredibly voice in the wilderness, this guy with his hair flowing. But behind all of that was a powerful message about you gotta respect yourself, you gotta respect each other, and you gotta be thinking beyond your own selfish condition. So I was just to put my fingers on the piano and play a Bob Marley melody is the greatest privilege. All of a sudden you get a, a, a notice in the email saying, you got a Grammy nomination. I said, what? So you, you, you're pleasantly surprised and shoot, my wife, she's more happy because she's going to buy a beautiful dress and get ready to go to the Grammys. So that's kind of exciting. When the 20th comes and I say Harlem Kingston Express with special guest, my longtime buddy, one of the greatest guitar players in the world, Ernest Wrangling, it's like I'm leaving the station. So the train is leaving the station where? Where I come from, Jamaica, Kingston. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm heading for that great land of opportunity, America. One of my heroes in music before I met him was, was the great Ray Brown. And one of the things we did together was make music in a little threesome of a group called Triple Tree. I figured that Christian McBride and, and Russell Malone would make a fabulous little setting and that's what Triple Tree Revisited is all about. Uplift is the name that I came up with on a recording which has been enjoying such a wonderful acceptance this last year. But when I come and play with my choice favorite musicians, which is, uh, which is Hassan Shakur and Herlin Riley is going to be joining me, the great Herlin, those who are on the record, and what I believe when I play, I get uplifted. If there's anybody who is another great, great uplifter, it's brother Dr. Lonnie Smith, who I go back with to the 60s. And Pat Martino, this incredibly special guitar player, we're gonna have a great hookup. And I'm kind of curious and interested for that one. Molyneux, Trinidadian, this amazing steel pan player, steel drum player, 
who was one of the pioneers in the jazz world back in the 60s and 70s because he was with uh, Jacob Astorius on a lot of recordings. And um, in addition to him, it just so happens that on bass, the same bass player, Hassan Shakur, and then Bobby Thomas, who was also with me back 35 years ago. Well, I'm fortunate that Etienne is going to be with us all, all soul, and I'm going to invite a great Trinidadian singer. His name is Designer. I call it Ivory and Steel, and we hope the Trinidadians will show up that night, and we'll honor them most wonderfully. Why I call it Jilly's is because it was an atmosphere and a place where Mr. Frank Sinatra would get up. I'd be playing a lot of the time, and I'd they come up and sing and sit in, and it was just a freewheeling atmosphere of the way it used to be. I could not have had two great artists to come and join me. Freddie is a, a, a keeper of the flame, the, the, the songbook. Dee Dee Bridgewater, one of the greats of all time. You have two of today's masters and mistresses, I don't know how you said, of the, the way the song is sung at its most beautiful. Seventy-six was the year that recording was made. Um, it was such an event for Montreal but certainly for me and I think for John and Jeff because we raised up a ruckus that night. And that was a typical evening in the, the adventures of that threesome. I was in Jamaica and I was saying, I said to us, I saw Sly Dunbar, who's everybody who loves that kind of music, he's the guru, you know? I said, it would be a great thing if we go out there and play up on the road, man. Make we just go play here, go play there, go play there. I said, you know, that would be a nice thing, you know, man. And I invited Sly and Robbie and they both said, absolutely. And they don't come to New York much unless they're with um, Grace Jones or they're with uh, Mick Jagger or somebody like that, you know? And they said, yes, so they're gonna come. And for me, you know, they are the, the top of the heap of what Jamaica is in terms of music and the impact on the world. And they begin that next series of evenings where I take the train, the Harlem Kingston, gone back to Kingston. We're all here for this train ride, this one love train ride. Monty is the captain on the ship, the conductor of the train, the piano is the engine, you know, in the middle of the whole thing. And that was really my dream. I'm looking forward that, that each night is, uh, is like I dream it to be. Come celebrate life with me as I celebrate 50 years of being a musician and uh, having a great time doing it. <laughs>